Hi and welcome to Our Small Table. Today we're making slow cooker Swiss steak and talking a little bit about slow cookers in general. Here's our finished dish. Let's see how we got here. This is actually going to be one of the easiest recipes we've done on Our Small Table. I've got the flour already seasoned. The salt and pepper is in here. And I'm just going to add the meat into the bag. Get rid of that. And then get it nicely coated. And I'll finish that off camera. Give the inside a little bit of a spritz so things are easier to get out later. For Swiss steak, the onion really ought to be sliced and not diced, but I had diced onion in the house, and so instead of buying a whole other onion, I'm just going to use the diced. Okay, I'll be right back with that meat. A lot of recipes call for coating meat in a zip top bag in this way, and I've done it in this case. But I do usually just go ahead and dredge in a shallow bowl. I find it actually easier to get the coating onto the meat. So you can always do that if that's your preference. And very simply, I'm going to add our celery and the entire 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. Then I like to just make sure that the meat is well covered. I find that I have better results if I don't have any little bits of meat sticking out at the beginning. And we're going to put the cover on. I use the rubber band. I can't remember if I've mentioned this in a pre previous video. Just so that there's no worries about if I I'm a little bit clumsy in the kitchen and I knock into it while it's cooking, then the lid is not going to come off. This is not required equipment and a lot of slow cookers actually don't come with it at all. And we're going to turn that to low and it's going to cook on low for six to eight hours or until the meat is tender, but I'm going to come back in the meantime and talk a little bit briefly about slow cooking in general. It's almost time for this that we've been working on to come out. But we're going to talk a little bit before I do that about slow cookers in general. So I brought out my larger slow cooker that I use for potlucks so I can pick it up and demonstrate. In many slow cookers there is no heating element in the bottom. All the heating comes around the side. And so it's important to fill the slow cooker properly. You want it to be at least half full because that's where the ingredients that are here, that's where they're going to be heated. You don't want to fill it more than about two-thirds full, however. This, the crock inner section, the insert, can go into a dishwasher if you have one, or can be washed with hot soapy water. Just don't use any abrasive cleaners or metal sponges, and try to be careful when you're using metal utensils in it not to scrape too much to the sides. You don't want to damage the stoneware. Slow cookers or crock pots come in many forms. My large one here has only off, low, and high. It's not plugged in, but I go ahead and turn it to off so it's not in use. My small one that I use regularly has off, keep warm, low, and high. You can also get them now that are computer programmed, that have timers built in so that they can start cooking at a certain time of day and then stop cooking and switch it to a keep warm setting if you haven't gotten home in time. That's really good for people who are cooking while they work. You don't want to store leftovers in the fridge inside of your insert. You want to move them to another container. And you don't want to go directly from the warm slow cooker into the fridge or vice versa. Large temperature differences can shock the 
slow cooker crock pot device and you can have some problems. You can use some frozen items, but try to avoid frozen meat and let it, let it thaw before you use it. Slow cookers cook at a little bit under 200 degrees Fahrenheit and that's why they're cooking so slowly is because it's a low temperature. Once the food is cooked, you don't want to leave it in the slow cooker for too long. Food needs to be kept cooler than 40 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter than 140 degrees Fahrenheit to be safe. I generally, as soon as it's done cooking, I serve it out. Anything that is left over goes straight into another container and then I allow that to cool to room temperature before I put it in the fridge. You don't want to remove the lid while you're cooking because with it being such a long cook time, every time you release the lid, you're letting out a lot of the heat, and it takes a lot longer for a slow cooker to come back to temperature than an oven. You don't really need to stir, and you don't want to stir when you're on low, but when you're using a high setting and a shorter cook time, doing a little bit of stirring, maybe once or twice, can help develop flavors a little bit. If you can, if you're doing on a low setting all day, try to use whole leaf herbs and spices. And if you're going to use ground herbs, then you want to use them at the end where possible. Importantly, dry beans, especially kidney beans, but also broad beans and fava beans, contain a toxin that needs to be cooked out. So if you're using canned beans, you're already fine, but dried beans need to be boiled for 30 minutes, boiled for 30 minutes or soaked overnight in water and then boiled in 10 minute boiled for 10 minutes in fresh water before adding to your slow cooker and it's actually more important that you do that with slow cooker than with any other form of cooking because the temperature that your slow cooker cooks at is more dangerous for that toxin than in your oven so let's see what we've got here pull out one of our pieces of meat And we'll give it some sauce and some of those onions that are sitting at the bottom. And there you have it. Thanks for joining me today at Our Small Table. The recipe I've used is linked in the video description and is available at OurSmallTable.com. Next time is the last in our January slow cooker series. It's slow cooker gooey brownie cake. Click subscribe so you don't miss out.